time n. Sorry. Uh, starting from this point, uh, you will um, work the work, but in the reverse direction. You will uh, reverse the time, and that's what you do here when you choose this index. So this is the work starting from zero zero, and when I do this change of index here, I work the work, but in the reverse direction. Uh, the time fl flies in the reverse direction. And then I choose to condition on the final point of the regular random work or on the starting point of the reversed random work. And I assume that uh, I started or I, the, the regular random work ended at the point ML, or I assume that the reverse random work started at ML. And you see, and it's really classic that the, the, this re reverse, um, sorry, I will check, this reversed, no. Sorry, okay. I, this reverse random work conditioned on its starting point is a Markov chain and has these probability transitions. It's a classic, it's known uh, since at least the 70s, but I think uh, completely uh, for, it's known for a very long time, I think. And actually, uh, Kennedy mentioned that, and it was uh, used by many people uh, studying, uh, for instance, uh, Galton Watson trees conditioned on, uh, on, their, uh, on their total size, on the total population, and other, uh, other context. And what is striking and very useful, for instance, for the study of, uh, of random trees, is that the conditioned uh, random work condition on this uh, final or start, final point or start, starting point, depending on the point of view. And uh, it's uh, really classic that uh, this law does not depend on the on the parameter of the Bernoulli. On the variables. Okay. And so this explains that you always go back to zero zero because uh, you you start to the from zero zero in the initial random work, and when you condition to the, the, the final point, it does not change the, the initial point. Here I did not say that x zero is zero. But it's a, it's usual Markov chain, so it's a usual random work. Okay. So and the, uh, the, the, the distribution is a free of p. So if we choose p equals one, we have always x x n equals zero. Yeah. Yeah. If p is one, you have always uh, y n equal to one, and you have always x and x k equal to k, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a line. It's not random. But okay. uh, if you choose, and if you condition this random work with p equal one to 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 end at this point, and uh, it does not mean anything because the probability of ending at this point is zero. So you can say anything because it's never happened. But if P is not, so I will I will assume that P is something uh, really really standard. I'm sorry. Okay. And then it's uh, it's well known by uh, by simply using uh, of Ding inequality. For instance, you can prove uh, in half a page that you have this behavior here, 
with uh, and that uh, it will be the, the limit uh, sample path is a line. It's simply you apply the, the, the law of large numbers of this to this here. And you, you obtain that uh, because of the law of the large numbers and uh, of the inequality, you won't uh, be outside some, uh, some stripe. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I will, I will write something. Uh, the, the law of large numbers tells you that xk is equal to pk plus or minus square root of k. Uh, and the central limit theorem tells you that. And uh, for instance, so you will, you will be inside, inside some stripe with uh, this, with this width. For instance, if you want to put one third instead of one half, it will be larger. And then, uh, sorry, it's uh, no, it's, um, maybe it's not that. Sorry, sorry. You will put if you want something larger, you will put two third. Yeah, and you have an exponential, uh, exponentially small probability of being outside this interval at any k for all k. So the probability to have, to have, uh, up, up, up. yeah, sorry. Ah, I missed everything. Hmm. So the, the probability that for any k between zero and m, xk belongs to pk, plus or minus k at the power two far, for instance. This probability is one plus something, minus something really, really small, exponentially is small. And the epsilon m is uh, something like, for instance, and at the power minus log n, for instance. Something very small, exponentially small. Um, M, sorry. So I don't write it, but this is really, the, the epsilon M here is really small. And here you have, so, so it's, it's classic, it's a simple exercise. exercise. In this case, by applying uh, the bound, the usual bound for, uh, for uh, random walks, sum of uh, independent random variables. Okay. And uh, also one thing, uh, this is really easy to compute. Sorry, that the, there is a very simple, it's completely easy to simplify this and to compute this, uh, this ratio and this prob transition probability. And you can see that uh, the slope, the probability here is k over, over n. The probability c is one minus k over n. And if you compute the average step, yeah, it's uh, minus one, minus k over n with a comma here. So here you have a step uh, minus one as zero. Here you have a step minus one, minus one. And the average is this. So the slope is k over n and the slope of this uh, of this average drift drives you right from uh, k from n k to zero zero it's just the right direction if you want to go to zero zero it's not uh, mysterious 
exactly as expected for a simple random walk. So now, if you don't have any question, because uh, I will take question at any time. Sorry. Uh, let's do the same with uh, the Stirling of the num Stirling number of the type of type two. Is there a, a, a probabilist interpretation? And it's written here, but in French, so it's so I will uh, translate if needed. Uh, you uh, use the same trick as before, but the random walk here is uh, the natural random walk in the coupon collector problem. So assume that uh, I uh, I will recall what is a coupon collector problem. You stop me if it's useless. You have uh, N coupon, big N coupon in total. For instance, you have big N players in the national team, the football national team. Uh, they have uh, the, the images of this player, the portraits of these players are hidden inside the uh, uh, the, wrap, the wrapping of a, a chocolate table, for instance. And you want to complete the collection and have all the portraits of the national team. Or your young brother or your young son want that. That's good, because you are too serious and too concerned by mathematics to be interested in that. But, and the, the, the interesting uh, parameter for your young brother or your young son is how many of the different players of the team does he have now after buying M tablet of chocolate. And this is, for instance, after buying N tablet of chocolate, he will have XN uh, players, different players of the team and not uh, N uh, different players, because sometimes uh, as he picks uh, the, 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 um, the tablet, uh, the chocolate table, tablet uh, randomly, he obtains a player that is already on the collection. So he's first frustrated and uh, the number of different players is different of the number of tablets. Okay, sorry, I don't, uh, it's, it's beginning to be late for me. And when I am uh, tired, my, my English vocabulary becomes poorer, sorry. So I hope you, are, you will pardon me for that. So this is a, a, a random walk too, but uh, not a random walk uh, obtained by uh, adding in the independent random variable. And the, the variation is uh, as follows. Xn plus one is always Xn plus zero or plus one. If uh, he already has uh, the new, the, the portrait that was uh, in, uh, in the chocolate tablet, it will be zero because it's not a new and it's collection of different players does not increase, or it's plus, plus one. So that's the same thing. It's a random work that is completely interesting. In this problem has been studied by Goss, by Laplace, by Erdos, and by many important mathematicians, but because actually it's about the enumeration of surjection. So it's not it's a very uh, classic problem. Uh, so you perform, you perform the same trick. This random walk, you can uh, look at, at it by reversing the time, and then you can condition to the final point of the, of the random walk or to the starting point of the reverse random work. And you just uh, find that uh, it's the Markov chain 
and the probability when you have k different players at time n that you had already k different players at time n minus one or that you just increased your collection from time n minus one, there are two possibilities. And the, these probabilities, knowing that you are here, are given by this, uh, this ratio. So the, the random walk uh, that I uh, defined some, some uh, rather artificially uh, using the Stirling 2 triangle is actually some pretty natural construction starting from a very classic problem of the coupon collector. And there is some use to, uh, and so on. So this is the interpretation. And uh, we proved with Anis Amri in, uh, in 19, two years or three years ago, that there is really a convergence of the sample path here to a, a very uh, well-defined curve, deterministic curve, depending on the starting point here. Yeah. Sorry, check. Okay. So depending on the starting point, you will have a sample path that will go to zero, zero by construction because you just reversed time from uh, for uh, of a random work that was starting from zero. So zero, zero is absorbing by definition. And there is a curve. There is a limit, a limiting curve. Okay. And you will stay inside the stripe a very narrow stripe, narrow in the sense that here you have n and the width of the stripe will be, for instance, n to the power two third, something like that. And we stay in this stripe with this width here. With uh, and you will, but for a very small probability. Okay, so that's uh, the result by Annie Samri. And what is this curve? How do you get this curve? And is it useful to something? That's, that, was, uh, that was the point I wanted to address in, uh, in this talk, but I don't know. Okay, I have spoken 45, 43 minutes. So I'm, I will explain how, how do, do you obtain the, the curve. So what is the limit? Check. Uh, identification of the limit. You look at the, at the average drift. This is uh, this this vector times P0 plus this vector times P1. And you obtain this. So you can see that the slope, the direction of your walk is P1, this P1, if you are starting from the point NK. The average slope is P1. The average steps is here. Okay. So you have to find a nice expression for P1. But unfortunate, unfortunately, this does not simplify. It's not K over N or something like that at all. It's not simple at all. But almost, it's some function of the ratio uh, k over n. But this function is not, it's not exactly this function. And this function is not really simple. 
So there is an error. This error goes to zero when uh, uh, nk goes to, to the infinite, infinite. And there is a uniform bound on this error in uh, some area inside the, the, the triangle, for instance. Some zone like that. In this zone, it will be uniform. It will be uniform. It will be of the, of, of the form C over N. We see uniformly bounded here. And this will be necessary if you want to prove the theorem. And what is phi? What is the function phi here? Sorry, so this is uh, what I said uh, before. The, uh, if you have uh, this approximation for, for the ratio, yeah, uh, then uh, the limit curve will be a solution of this equation. So here, n is uh, what plays the role of y, of x. Chi is what plays the role of y. And here you have x over y. And uh, p1 is the, is the drift, so it plays the role of the derivative. So you just have to, to solve this equation. And you have to find phi. OK? And uh, this is almost as you have uh, you had a vector field yeah. From each point kn, it will be a combinatorial vector field because it is defined only on the of the point with integer uh, coordinates, and uh, the vector is here, and you have an approximation that makes that uh, that leads to the fact that p1 is a function of the ratio n over k. Okay. And we, when you renormalize uh, to, so here you have n, sorry. Yeah, yeah you, have, you have n here. Yeah. Here you have n two. So if you divide by n, uh, sorry, if you divide by n here, yeah. And you divide by n here. Yeah. Your sample path here yeah, will converge, will be in a very narrow stripe once renormalized around the curve starting from here yeah, one and here yeah, L over n. Okay, so how do you get the famous function phi, phi, I don't know, phi. Uh, for instance, what do you, do you get when, uh, in the case of the Pascal triangle, uh, there is simplification, yeah. Uh, so it's, there is no error term here. It's completely explicit. Phi is uh, one over X. You have to solve this equation and the solution is well known. It's the linear functions, obviously. If Y is A times X, a times X divided by X is A and uh, Y prime is A two. So it seems that the, the theorem works in the very simple case of Pascal formula. So the solutions are the lines. Now, a little bit uh, difficult, more difficult. 
what is this famous function phi in the case of Stirling two numbers? So in the in the case of uh, coupon collector problem, here it is. Phi of u, phi of uh, y over x, or phi is exponential of minus zeta of u minus one. And zeta is an implicit function of uh, its variable. You obtain zeta if you solve this. So, sorry, this should be u here. Lambda is u. And if you want, you put u here, you solve this equation and you obtain zeta of u. So it's only defined implicitly. So zeta is uh, the reciprocal of uh, the reverse function for, for this very simple function. And then you have to solve the equation for this phi defined from zeta. And you have a differential equation, you solve it and you have the shape of the limit curve. Okay, so that's uh, the way you uh, obtain phi. So I will, uh, with uh, Anis Amri, we use that to uh, understand better uh, an asymptotic formula of Korshunov in the 70s that counts the number of automata and and have n vertices and k letters. So that's, uh, that's an object from uh, fundamental uh, computer science. It's very, uh, automata are uh, uh, a device that allows to verify uh, programs, languages, and verify that uh, there is no error in some programs or to belong Wage. And uh, this enumeration is, uh, is important if you want to apply algorithm to automata to optimize them. But I won't go too far in this direction because time is, uh, is counted. It would be, in my opinion, quite interesting. But uh, I don't have any time and I have only two minutes to say just one word about uh, scaling numbers of the first kind. And this, uh, this would be the, the same thing. Uh, what is the, the GM, or what is the Chinese restaurant? In a Chinese restaurant, model, it's, a, it's a model, it's kind of a funny model that uh, was introduced as far as I know by Aldous, in which at some stage you have a restaurant and in this restaurant we have a number of tables and at the first table you have end main index one clients and the second table you have n minus and index two clients and so on and in the excel so you have l tables and it each tables you you have a some number of clients and then somebody, and the total is n, and uh, a new client arrive. And what will he do? He will join the first table with probability n1 over n plus theta. The second table with probability n2 over n plus theta, and so on. The last table with this probability. Or he will sit alone with probability theta over n plus theta. 
And with the choice theta equal to one, it's a model for uh, the construction of a permutation with a uniform distribution on the permutations. And the distribution of the number of tables that you obtain if theta is equal to one is the number of distribution of the number of cycle in the decomposition in of a random permutation in these joint cycles. Okay. So uh, if you take XK to be the number of tables in the restaurant with clients uh, seated on at these tables, XN will uh, uh, increase by zero or one at each arrival of a client. And you can, can perform the same construction. You can condition on the ending point and you can walk this random walk in the reverse direction reversing the time. And when you do that, you find that it's a Markov chain and you find that the transition probability came, came from the Stirling number of the first type. And you have the same uh, behavior, the same possibility of uh, computing the limit direction, the limiting curve, where phi is here. And where zeta is uh, is obtained by it as an implicit function of lambda. Okay, and it's related to the logarithmic law of Fisher. But I will stop here because it's time. Sorry, to have been uh, a little bit long. Sorry, sorry. So if there are questions, I will be happy to. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Philippe, for this nice talk. If uh, there are some uh, questions, please. Are there some questions? Uh, oui. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Philippe. So, Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, could you explain the origin of the of your idea to to combine between uh, Pascal triangles and, for example, Chinese restaurant as applications? Because uh, I could not and, 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 rever could and, and reverse the the the, the Markov chain instead of x n you consider x m minus k. So. What it does is not the origin uh, of your idea. The origin of my idea is uh, the study of this uh, automata because there is a nice bijection uh, by. Uh, so, you, originally, it was be because of the study that we did with Annie Samri of the, the enumeration of automata because uh, actually there is a very nice bijection, sorry, uh, found by. I believe by Cyril Nico. Actually, I found it uh, in his uh, HDR type thesis. And he found a nice bijection between uh, uh, the stories of the collectioner, uh, coupon collector uh, uh, okay. story and the, um, the automata. So there is a bijection between uh, the Collection the coupon collector story where using buying KN plus one uh, chocolate tables, you obtain N different portraits and the automata that have N uh, vertices and the language as K letters. But there is a constraint. It's uh, not a bijection between uh, this automata and all the stories, but it's a bijection between the stories that stay above some forbidden triangle here. Yeah. And actually, the, the problem that we solved, we were very happy to have the, the sample path constrained to be in this, uh, in this stripe because we, you, we wanted the probability that it never goes in the forbidden zone here. 
and you, you could concentrate only on the, this small area here. Sorry, check this small area here. Uh, and this. and uh, we we managed to do the trick after the, uh, we proved this. But uh, why did we reverse? Uh, why did we reverse the time? It was because here the approximation is better. Uh, so oh, yeah. we started from the end because uh, we have a good approximation of the Stirling numbers when n and k are large and we have a very bad approximation when they are small. So we started to study here because oh, yeah. the approximation is better. Okay, oh, yeah. that was the idea. That's the reason why we reversed the, the, the study of the random world, and we did not fall on this immediately. Uh, numbers, but uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Sorry. So um, finally, we found out that. And uh, we, we understood that we had to find very precise approximation for the Stirling numbers. The, the usual approximation from the, for the Stirling numbers were, were not precise enough using the saddle point method. So we had to, to bound the error tar, term if you wanted to, to apply some kind of uh, alert scheme to, to, up, to find the limit of the sample path. Okay. But, uh, we starting from the end because uh, at the end it, the approximation is really precise. That's why. And when we found that, uh, one day I, I realized that we we also do that for the Pascal triangle, and it's quite classic for the Pascal triangle. So let's do it for other triangle too and see if there is something to see. Okay. Thank you. A uh, 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 last uh, remark, not, uh, not a question. It's not, uh, it's not a question. Uh, Pascal triangle can be, should be called al triangle because al found out this triangle six centuries before uh, Pascal. Just a remark. Okay. okay. Uh, Look, uh, okay. On, the, on Wikipedia, al K A R A J I. Okay. Thank you very much. No, Al Kharaji. Professor. I also I also read that uh, the, the Pascal triangle appear, appeared in some Hindu Hindu uh, writings. Chinese people. Chinese, Hindu, but uh, three centuries before before Pascal, but six centuries before uh, Pascal Al Kharaji. Well, you know better than me. <laughs> uh, I, I heard also, also about some uh, uh, apparition of this in uh, some Hindu writings, but uh, I don't remember the reference. So, okay, I okay. agree. I agree, <laughs> but uh, everybody uses the Pascal triangle terminology. So, I'm in my course, I practice. use the both al Okay. Uh, thank agree. you. I, uh, I have a question, uh, Philippe, uh, not uh, maybe a naive question. Le, le, for the collection of uh, coupons, how, how many uh, tablets it mean you have to bought to obtain uh, an uh, an, uh, <laughs> an different uh, portrait? It, uh, it, it depends very much on the size of the collection. So it depends very much on the, the size of the national team. There is some parameter here. Okay. Uh, and uh, I had some computation, but uh, the computation uh, need if you, okay, so if, uh, let's write here. Uh, it's well known that if you want to complete the collection, Capital N is and the, if the collection is uh, if this size, you will need n log n. Okay. Uh, a timeline log n. It is known also that if you have bought m 
M uh, tablet. Okay. You you will have something. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm equal to. Uh, sorry, sorry. There is n uh, one minus n at the power. This is the number of uh, this the average number of uh, of different players that you have, and this is approximately. Uh, an exponential, no, sorry, 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 sorry. This is a number of, uh, of missing member of the, of the, oh, sorry. Ah, I'm sorry that I don't, I'm not really used to this. Uh, you, when you have bought M tablet, you have, you miss this number of, of, um, yes, this is the number that you miss. No, it is equal to one. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I don't know why this disappeared, but if you have M, now it's n minus n one over one over n at the power m. This is k. This is the, the average value of k, and this is approximately n factor one minus exponential n over n. This is an approximation. Mm -hmm. So um, it depends completely on M. Okay. But um, so if you divide by, um, sorry, that's not what I, ah, sorry, bon. uh, sorry. Uh, you can find the ratio K okay. over big N in function of M over big N. Uh, M over big M by using, uh, by inversing some uh, rather complicated function. Uh, it's, uh, what happens is that you have this, uh, you have, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. K over N is equal to one minus approximately. Okay. Mm. Approximately, so if you want k in function of, if you want k over m, if you want the slope, you you will write this. So you have to, if you want the ratio k over m, you have to inverse the function one minus exponential minus x over x. And uh, you, you find the, the reciprocal of this function. You apply it to, 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 to k and you find m. Uh, sorry. If you want to know how many tablets, chocolate tablets you have to, to, buy, to buy to obtain k players, you will have to, to invest this function. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this work, uh, and, okay. Hmm. Sorry. Yes. Sorry for my, my English at this time of the, of the day. That's okay. Is this uh, published work, uh, Philippe, or not yet? Sorry, no, it's not yet published, but will be very soon. Okay, okay. Are there other questions, please? There is a, there is some um, source on my web page. It's a paper by uh, me and Anissa Amri that describes uh, very completely the, the, 
what we did for stealing of the second type. Okay. So, okay. This is complete, not published, but on my web page and on archive. So, so if no other questions,